My name is Declan. I'm delighted to be joined by Knut Relbemo, who will be talking to you about how to create a Windows app with Project Sienna, SharePoint, and Office 365. Remember to join in the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is a European SP, and our hashtag is ESPC15. Of course, Knut will be speaking at European SharePoint Conference 2015 in Stockholm this November, along with some of the top names in SharePoint, such as Jeremy Take, Dan Holm, Seth Patton, Bill Baer, Mike Fitz, among others. Currently, there are some great booking offers for the conference, so make sure to go to www.sharepointeurope.com to check them out. After the webinar, we will have questions. Type any questions you have for Knut in the question pane in the control panel. Some questions will be selected and answered at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded, and you'll be notified by email when it is available. And now, I'm going to pass over to our webinar presenter, Knut Relbemo. Hello, Knut. Hello, hello. Okay, Knut, you should have control of the screen now. Yeah, can you see my screen? Not quite yet. Yeah, now I can see it. Now I can see it. Uh, perfect. Okay, thank you so much, Declan, for allowing me to come and uh, have this uh, webinar for you guys at the uh, European SharePoint community. So thank you to all uh, who is watching. Uh, I hope you will be as eager as I am after this presentation to check it out, uh, what Project Sienna is all about. So my name, as Declan was saying, is Knut Rilbemo. I'm an Office 365 MVP, and I'm currently working for Knowledge Factory here in uh, Norway as a chief technical architect. Uh, yeah, uh, as you can see on the screen, you have all my contact details. I have a blog, so of course uh, I will blog about this presentation also just after the is finished. And uh, please follow me on Twitter. Uh, and if you have some questions which we wouldn't have time to cover in this uh, question and answer session at the end, please don't hesitate to contact me on uh, email or Twitter or yeah, just any social media where you can find me. I will. I'm usually on, anyways. Uh, so, uh, if you want to know more about Knowledge Factory, of course, uh, just check out our homepage. Uh, and we are already five MEPs in uh, my company, so we are like a really high-level uh, consulting company. So I'm proud to work there. But of course, all you guys are coming, of course, to listen to me talking about Project Sienna. So actually, Project Sienna has been around for couple of years already, uh, and but it's still in beta, so it's still not publicly uh, released. So, uh, but the idea about Project Sienna is that it should be like a way for you to create in an easy way Windows 8 or now Windows 10 apps without writing any code. Uh, because probably a lot of you guys out there is just like me, uh, which uh, kind of doesn't want to write all that code. We want to kind of just use the graphical and kind of easy and kind of fast, create some nice looking apps which we can use in our uh, organization. So this is actually what Microsoft is trying with Project Sienna. As you probably know, Microsoft has a lot of other uh, kind of ideas which covering the same uh, same skill set, so to say, as Project Sienna, but, uh, uh, and they have like, uh, for now, uh, next version of Project Sienna they are currently working on, but uh, the name and everything is under a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't reveal anything to you, but uh, there are some cool things coming out from Microsoft uh, when it comes to next version uh, or, uh, on Project CN as well. Uh, so the cool thing also, of course, with Project CN is that it uh, can be used also on your tablets. Uh, Windows tablets, of course, so you can actually with just uh, using your finger, you can also do the same things which I'm showing you now today. So, uh, since I, we are here with the SharePoint community, I will have like a spin-off on this, uh, on how you can actually integrate Project Sienna with uh, SharePoint and Office 365. You can, of course, do a lot more, but for today, we will just cover uh, the Office 365 and the SharePoint world, so to say. So this is kind of what you have today. You have like a SharePoint environment where you have like a list of SharePoint speakers in my setting. Uh, yeah, with a graphical interface which is kind of dull, so to say. It's like not looking that nice. 
uh, and it's not that kind of user-friendly, so to say, and especially from uh, if you think about uh, a tablet or like a surface, this doesn't look any nice, so to say. Uh, so the graphical interface is not the best. And of course, you have a lot of room for improvements. So this is exactly where you will fit in Project Sienna. Uh, I don't know if you are knowing it, but of course, Microsoft, they are liking to use uh, city names of their code names, because Project Sienna is also still a code name, uh, like code name Oslo was before for the Office Graph. So Project Sienna is, of course, uh, a city in Italy. So uh, as Oslo was a city in Norway, so this is kind of like a, something cool if you will know if you know about it. Uh, so um, instead of having like this old dull uh, SharePoint lists with uh, not anything nice when it comes to the graphical interface, of course, then you will uh, want to have something more, which is more nice to look at, more nice to use, and of course easier to use, and so forth. Uh, so uh, that is exactly where Project Sienna comes to the rescue. And this is actually an application uh, made in Project Sienna. Uh, I'm not sure if you think it will look nicer than which we already saw, but at least I think so. Uh, and you can do a lot of things here with kind of easy touches. You can change it a lot and you can make it look quite nice, quite easy. Uh, but still this interface with showing the different speakers is for me a lot nicer than this one. So and as you can see, we can integrate uh, video with text and with images uh, straight in the application. Uh, and today, of course, uh, all is uh, about uh, showing you, so I won't show you too much uh, slides. I want to show you more demos, so I'm soon finished with all my slides. Uh, but uh, before we jump into Project Sienna, uh, Project Sienna, of course, is, uh, how I would like to say, it's a tool for the information worker or the business users, where you can actually create nice-looking apps without writing any code. Uh, and you can even publish the application so other in your organization can install it on their computers. So uh, this is kind of uh, how I see this have like a potential. Either you can use it to kind of uh, create like really fast mockups on how an application could be looking like, or you can actually write your application in the Project Sienna. So how to get started, uh, you should just install it from the App Store, uh, and let's just jump straight into the demo. I hope you still can see my screen, so Declan, if, uh, if you want to see my screen, of course, I hope you will let me know. Uh, but as you can see, I'm also running on Windows 10. This is uh, really cool stuff. I recommend everyone to upgrade, of course. Uh, and then here you can see I have already installed Project Sienna. But I can also, as easily, if I didn't have it installed, I will just uh, go to the store. I'm just writing store here, clicking. And then we open up the Windows Store. And then we just need to search for Project Sienna. We're just clicking here. And there you can see the application. So now I have already installed it, so it will just tell me that it's already installed, but if you haven't installed it, you can just click here, install, and the application will be installed. But instead of installing it, we'll just click open. So now we're opening up Project Sienna. And now you can actually see my screen. So as you can see now, we have like... A a toolbar on top here where we can see the application data. We can see the add screen. Uh, so the screen is actually where we can have like multiple screens in our application. So let's just add the second screen now. So then we can see here I have two screens. So if I want now to navigate from one screen to the other screen, I can just click the plus button over here to add a visual. And then I can add a button. I just click it. And the button will come in here. I can resize it if I want. I can have like a really large button. 
And then I will just uh, select on select. And then you can actually see here already, it's offer us the possibility to na navigate. So, and then it's ask us where we do want to navigate. And since I only have two screens, of course I want to navigate to screen number two. And then you can also see you have some different uh, transitions. You can also choose between. So let's just choose the cover transition for now. And if I cl click also design, we see we have more options here. We should actually change the fill color just as easy as this. Now I suddenly have a red button. If I want to make the text bigger, yeah, now I actually jump to screen number two. So if I just want to make the text bigger, just click text. I will choose over here, which is the size. And I can just drag it. And there you can see the button. So now it's good. Uh, and now if we go to screen number two, just click here. We can add another button where we just have all the way on down the screen. Let's just click text to change the text. I want to have it named back instead. And on select, again, we will just select navigate and we want to go to screen number one. And if I now want to preview my application, I just right click here and I'll select preview. As you can see now, I can easily navigate. And you see it has different transitions. One of them is fading, the other one is just sliding in. So as you can see, that is kind of really, really easy on how you can navigate between the two screens. But of course, uh, we want to have this one, uh, we don't want to have this one. Instead, we want to add a image gallery because I want to show that images from my SharePoint list. So here we have an image gallery. As you can see now, we can choose here, select items, and then we can add a data source. So I'll just click here to add a data source. And here we can see all the different types of data sources where you can actually add your uh, data from. Uh, and you can see here we have SharePoint, we have Azure Mobile Services, you even have Facebook, you have REST, so actually you can do whatever you want with the REST uh, interface. But for now we will use SharePoint. You can see we have SharePoint on-premises or SharePoint online. So I will just connect to my SharePoint online. Site. So let's see, it should be, sorry about that, Knut slash Sienna. I click connect. And now it's open up to uh, the Sienna connector is asking us to connect to, uh, to Office 365. So I type in my username and password here. Since uh, choose work account. I click sign in. And here you go. It asks us to approve that uh, Sienna needs this kind of permissions. You have only the option to accept, of course. So I accept it. And now you can see the different list that exists in my SharePoint environment on SharePoint Online. I choose the SharePoint speakers and I click import data. And here you can see my lists. Also, I can, you can see that it's already connected with Office 365 since SharePoint Online is also part of Office 365, as you all know. So now we have the data source. So if I go to items now, you can see that we either can select Office 365 as a data source or we can select SharePoint speakers. So we want to select SharePoint speakers. And here you can see already that it came in with images and everything. Just like that. 
And if I now want to change the text here, because you can see this is uh, not the text I wanted, you just click the text, you select text here, and then you can see that this one is showing this items about field, but I want to show the title field. Or you can show the name, the title field, so which is the name. And we can even do like this. We can even go here. We can add a label. And let's see, text. And this should be not about, but this should be the title field. So you can see, I actually can even put in the different, I can even add more things to show from that library if I want to do it. So, uh, and then of course, if you want to start it, we can select design. We can, of course, select padding. And then we can just choose uh, this gray color here. We can make it transparent, as you can see. And if we think this text is a little bit big, we'll just go here and make it some smaller. We can also make the, this one more smaller and can move it down. We can move this one some more down like this. So here you can actually sit and play around with the pixels, with the, uh, with the styling as much as you want actually. So, of course, now we want to make, uh, if I will select a uh, speaker here, of course, we want to move to this second screen to show more information about the speaker. But before we do that, we want, of course, to add, like, a label to the, yes, yeah, sorry about that. Just need to go out of it. We also want to add the label to the page. So let's just make it like this with the text. And we'll just put SharePoint speakers here. Like this. It's just, I didn't like that, so let's just do it again. Label, text. Like this. And then we will choose the design. We'll make this one some bigger. And I really hope you will uh, ask questions, if you have anyone, uh, during this. So we'll just do, uh, do some of them in the question and answers later. And if, of course, you are wondering about it, or if you want to have like a more in-depth uh, session about uh, Project Yana, you can always contact me, and we can set that up for you as well. So here we have our title of the page. So then, of course, we will uh, go here. Now we want to uh, actually, when I will click here, we want to navigate to the screen number two. So to be able to do that, we then just select here. And we go to the behavior on select. And we will say that this one should navigate to screen number two. And we also want to collect because we want to bring with us the selected item. So if we now click here, it will go to the screen number two. Of course, we need then to add some uh, controls to screen number two as well. So let's just uh, do the image. Now, I want to have like a big image to show the image of the speaker. So, 
as you can see then I can select the gallery one selected and the image lab, image from the gallery one selected and here we go so if I right click now and preview you can click back if I choose Dan Home you will see the picture Dan Home if I choose Falak you can see Falak so that's actually how easy it is to create like a image slider with the speakers and show data from SharePoint. But let's add some more information here. For now it doesn't give us that much value. It just can see like an image, of course. It's always nice to see Dan smiling, but uh, let's uh, add a label again. We want, of course, to show the name of the speaker as well. There's not everybody who knows that this nice looking fellow is Dan Holm. So again, gallery one selected, and we will choose title. And then you can see it shows us that this nice looking fellow is actually Dan Holm. That's kind of awesome. Who would guess that this was that easy to check that this image was from Dan Holm? And of course, uh, let's uh, do some more. Let's add a text box. I want to show you that you can actually add the text box as well. So that should be an input text. So we'll do that over here. Because you can actually also send the data back to SharePoint. So you can actually update them locally here in your Project CN app. And then you can store the data back into SharePoint. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you that uh, in the limited time we have now, but uh, we will see. Hopefully I will be able to do it. If not, I will blog about how you can do it later. So, of course, here we will also select instead of input text, we want to have gallery one selected, and then we want to have the title. And we want also to show a little bit more text about the home. So to be able to do that, we will choose the HTML label in case the text is formatted with HTML. So we'll just add that one also to the canvas, to our screen. We will add it like this. This is a little bit bigger. And again, we will select down here, HTML text. So instead of showing your HTML here, you can actually do guy one selected and about. And then if you want to design this one, you can, of course, uh, have a fill just on that one, if you want. Let's see. Yeah. I think this one is nice. And, of course, you can make this text bigger as well by just selecting text, the size, and just scroll it up like this. And let's preview it again. We see we get the scroll bar as well. We click back. We can select Falak. So that is actually quite nice, I think. So of course, again, we select here. We can also add some more things here. As you can see, we have the SharePoint update uh, event down here, which will throw the updating back to the server. So let's just do the data source here. That should be collection one, I think. And we will look more at that later. So let's just also then go and add something from the web because we can also add a YouTube playlist. So let's just click here. I think I clicked two times now, so bear with me. 
ask us also to connect to the service. So again, I type my email. And my password. And it connects. You can see I got actually two lists, but we can delete one of them. Okay, so we will drag you all the way there over here. So if we do the preview now, we can actually look at the YouTube clip also. But of course, um, what we want to do is actually to be able to get videos that includes a down home here. So let's see if we will be able to do that as well. I think actually we should, instead of using this one, we should use one which is called web and YouTube search. Two seconds and it will come. Yeah. So the other one is if you already have created a playlist and you want to just show the a playlist feed, but here you can see it's have search for Project Sienna. But instead of searching for Project Sienna, we want to have it to search for our gallery one selected and the title, which is Dan Home. And then you can actually see that we already get videos including Dan Home here. So now you can actually see how easy it is to connect my SharePoint data, which is I show here from the SharePoint list with YouTube which is, at least I think, is pretty awesome. It didn't take me much time now, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, and I actually created an app that can give my users something, uh, because now they don't need to search the web for all this stuff. I can just create the app, and then I can give them the red data. So at least I can see some way of using this one into an organization as well, because I'm actually connecting the different services together to give everything uh, presented in a nice looking way to my end users. So if we do the preview now, again, we will see that we have done home. If we go back, we of course can look for Victor Villain. And then we can also see that we get YouTube videos with Victor here. So I think that is uh, quite, quite nice, actually. And you can, uh, of course, select this one instead. And you can watch. So thank you, Victor, for taking part in this uh, presentation. I will see you later, my friend. So this is uh, kind of awesome. But for now, let's uh, just save this file because I want to show you also something else. So I'll just save it. Maybe we'll, we'll jump back to this one later. So let's just save it to Sienna. Yes, per se. One. I can also upload these uh, files for you guys so you can use them yourself. You just need to connect to your own data sources. So let's then now just jump briefly back to my uh, presentation. As you can see now, we have run the demo on how you can actually connect to SharePoint from Project Sienna. And now I want to show you how you can actually connect to Office 365 and to use some of the features of others in Office 365 than SharePoint Online. And I will, uh, of course, um, with all these different uh, 
demos on my blog later. So let's just click new. I don't want, yeah, I don't want to stay logged in. Maybe I will use some other connection this time. So let's uh, then, again, you can see the visual screen here. We have one visual screen. So actually not, what I want to do now, if I want to use some of the new features that came out uh, last autumn uh, from uh, Project Sienna team, uh, which is in this Office 365 preview. So actually you can uh, show your meetings, you can schedule a meeting, you can show your contacts or people, and you can also show your inbox actually. So let's uh, do that. Let's uh, connect again to Office 365. Oh, that was uh, the wrong button, sorry about that. Okay, work account. So let's just sign in. So actually now I will create an app where you can actually show my meetings and I will filter my inbox based on my meetings. So here you can see my calendar. You need to accept, of course, the connector again. So if you just wait a few seconds, uh, it will actually show me my meetings here. And I can navigate. So let's just uh, fast also add the inbox. Now I'm already connected, so it wouldn't ask me to connect again. But it will show me my inbox, so let's just drag and drop this one as well. Here. Yep. Yeah. Let's make it some smaller. So now actually I want to filter my inbox based on what I select in the list over here in my, in my meetings. So what I need to do then is just to select here because you can see filter on subject and sender. So I can just click it here and I can again select from the tools down here, uh, set default text. So instead of having the default text empty, I can of course select uh, the core gallery. And I'll just now show you briefly how you will find out what is the name of the gallery. You will just click here, and then let's see if I will manage to get it correct. Gallery one, as you can see. So then we just go back here. We click uh, not data, but we will click here default. Gallery one selected. And that has, of course, I think that is actually a subtitle one. Let's try that. See if it will be correct. No, that one. As you can see, we got like a, a warning sign here. So something is not correct. So let's try gallery two instead. Yeah, that's great. Gary Larry to selected subject. And there you can see. It actually filter now my inbox based in Office 365 based on my meetings. Which of course is kinda cool if you ask me. And then of course we can do take this even further. We can even say we need to like send uh, all the uh, meeting, we, we need to send like after the meeting, we should send like a meeting note to all the attendees to that meeting. So all we need to do to be able to do that is actually we can again go here, Office 365 Preview, 
and then we can do send message. So let's just add that one as well. Of course, we need to make it some smaller to make it fit into the screen. We could, of course, have this one also as the, uh, to add it to like a second screen like it was doing before, but I think uh, we have not more than enough space to have it here. So I will just remove the two field, and then we will just move this one some up and make the message some bigger like this. Okay. So of course I now want to have the subject to be also the subject, uh, the same subject as the uh, uh, meeting uh, name. Uh, so then we need to be able to do that, we need to just click here, go to the data and default, and inside here we will just write like this and gallery two again selected and of course subject. And you can see we already preset the subject for the message. And of course, on the send, we got now like an invalid name because we deleted the text box which we had up here before. So then we just need to change the unselective event. So instead of finding the Office 365 re re receptions, we will actually use the gallery to selected attendees, which is actually all the attendees to that meeting. So all the attendees which will uh, now attend that meeting will actually get an email from, from me. So if we will preview this app, We can, of course, check. I have no meetings on Saturday, but on Friday I have a couple of meetings, and tomorrow I also have a couple of meetings. So let's select the USB seed Sienna demo. You can see that I have two emails which I got uh, for myself, uh, of course, for for that. And if I will select the Sienna meeting, you can see that I have now nothing, but you can see that the message uh, is already populated with the subject field from here. Uh, so if we go to Friday, of course we can select the July collab talk from Christian Buckley, and you can see that uh, this is also here. So let's just select the uh, USPC Sienna demo again. And I will, let's just assume that the meeting is finished. I will just say, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for watching my demo about Project Sienna and Office 365. This really rocks. All right, regards, Knut. Well, when I will click send now, this one will actually send a mail. And if we'll just wait a couple of seconds, I will get the mail as well, I hope. If I did everything correct. So if you actually now go here, click on this one again. collect information for us again. And we can see my mail here. So of course if I want to add even more, we can of course add a second screen as we were seeing before, add second screen. Okay, we have screen number one. I'll click here. On select, we will navigate to screen two, and we will collect. 
and that's gallery tree. Selected. All right. So let's go to screen two. And then, of course, in screen two, we can then add one other message. So we can actually see the message. So we can see my mail as well. So if we go to, okay, let's one, do one more thing before we go to the preview. Should of course always remember to add the back button. So back button should be here on select navigate. That's fine. And let's change the text to back. All right. So then we will preview. So if I will select here now. Okay, didn't manage to, yeah, there we go. Okay, so actually now we can see how easy it is to actually add the connectivity to Office 365, how easy it is to actually uh, connect the different uh, yeah, services of Office 365. We can actually easily connect the inbox and filter it from the meeting, uh, meeting uh, the calendar grid. And of course, you can uh, also send an uh, email message to the attendees. And of course, if we look at all the visuals here, you can see that we have a lot of different visuals, which I haven't uh, looked into now. We can have like different charts. We can have uh, audio. We can uh, actually record what is said on with the microphone. We can add like the camera. So we'll add, uh, let's just say, add the camera up here just to show you. Yeah, that is me. Hello, everyone. So you can see that it's actually also taking the image there. So uh, let's just uh, do the preview again. So you can actually also even show the camera in your app. So that is actually kind of cool if you ask me. So. Uh, the last thing I want to show you now, because I think our time is soon running out, so when it comes to how we can store data back to SharePoint, I will uh, write a blog about that. I think it's better, but uh, I want really much to show you how you can publish this app so you can actually get this app out to your organization. So to be able to do that, we will just click File, Publish. And you can now see that uh, we can actually choose our icon. You can uh, choose the color here. Or we can select our own if we have one created. I don't have that now. So let's just call it SPC CN demo. Then we, as you can see now, before publishing, you need to provide unique keys for the service you have added. If we will have more than Office 365, we need to create uh, different keys for that as well. For instance, for YouTube. So I will just click here. Sometimes things take time when you are on the live demo. Okay, let's just click here. And here you can actually just click register app. If it will be Office 360, if it will be YouTube or something else, you will have to copy paste this all the things from YouTube. But for now we can just uh, register the app here and it will take care of everything for us. 
And again, we need to do the login to Office 365 to be able to do that. Work or school account. Keep me something we don't need. So now it's registering my application for me automatically. So if we just have small patient here, it will be finished, yeah. Then we can see that done, all services successfully updated to use unique keys. So now we may publish, so we get like a big publish key down here. So let's just uh, click that one, publish. Let's just create new app, new folder, ESPC demo, put it here, select folder, and it's publishing for us. So there you go. So now I'll just save these projects as well. So let's just save it as number two. So then we'll just close this one. And if we'll go to my desktop, you can actually then see inside the SPC demo, we have a published package where we can actually install the application. So this one you can actually uh, hand out to your organization. So let's just click install. So here you can actually select and choose if you want to install it or if you want to create a file for sharing. So for now I just want to install it on this computer. To be able to install it like this, you need to have developer mode switched on uh, on the computer, uh, but it will tell you that if you haven't uh, it explain you how to do it uh, because you'll just get an error and an explanation on how to fix it. So, so it's really soon ready, yeah, success. It has been installed already. So let's just click the start button. So we'll just search for ESPC. Here you go, Sienna demo. Even with the icon that she was selecting. So if we'll just click it. You see we get a nice yellow color here also. And of course, uh, you need to sign in to be able to use it. So here, of course, if it was like another user, it will sign in with their username and password. I of course, will sign in with mine. Keep me a sign in, don't need. So then I'm signing in, and it also asked me to approve for the CNN connector, I clicked accept. And now you can see my screen again with my camera. And just give it a couple of seconds and it should show us also the data from Office 365. So then of course I can now select Friday, SPC and CNN demo and it will filter my things here. And again, I can send an email. This is from my publish. Sienna app. Now it's your turn. Okay, click send. And if I just wait a little bit. And we can see my mail here. So I think that is uh, Pretty cool that you can actually quite easily create like an application there where you can actually add together all things from Office 365. We could also do like uh, different filtering here. We could even add some uh, SharePoint list here where we will also do the filter stuff. 
So I think uh, if you want to create easy uh, apps, which is actually quite good looking, this is like a good way of doing it. Uh, so let's just close the Sienna demo now. And we will jump fast back to my presentation and we should soon be also have no time left. So of course, when it comes to Sienna components, as I was showing you, you have different screens, you have different visuals, you have some functions, and you also have data sources and collections. And as you can see, it was quite easy to create screens. It was quite easy to navigate between the screens. And you can see that there's a lot, a lot of visual controls for you out there already created or just for you to use. So it's just like uh, as easy as it would be to insert uh, image into Word is the same here, actually. Uh, and of course, you have different function categories uh, which you can also utilize. We didn't look into that now, but it's a good source of uh, information on the channel nine for some of these things, and also other people have blogged about it, so we can just Google it, or Bing it if you prefer that. And of course, data sources include, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, SharePoint, Office 365, Excel, REST, Bing, and so on and so forth. Actually, a really cool feature is the Bing translator. Uh, and if you will look at channel nine, you can see like a really good tutorial on how you can actually implement, uh, use that one to automatically translate uh, text from your uh, sources. So uh, what Project Sienna is not, uh, it's not a develop tool. Uh, you will never, I think, be able to replace what uh, developers can uh, create in Visual Studio. Uh, and of course, uh, mission critical transactional application, maybe you wouldn't use Project Sienna 4. And of course, it's not like the silver bullet that will just fit every business scenario out there. But I think uh, you can uh, use Project Sienna for like create the demo, sketch up, to visualize how an app can look. You could easily create some input from SharePoint. You can actually use it to uh, create forms, for instance. If you have like users which is running around with Windows tablets, you can create really nice looking forms instead of infopath forms, which they can use actually a product Sienna for. Uh, and of course, you can create some business intelligence app to show data both from SharePoint and other different uh, sources uh, to show charts and data bars and so on and so forth. So it's a lot of uh, possibilities there, so you just need to kind of look into it yourself and see how you think uh, Project Sienna can be used in your organization. Uh, what, what I know for sure is really easy. It's like uh, it doesn't take like much to learn, uh, and you can actually do a lot more there than you would imagine yourself be able to do. So this demo I was already showing you. Uh, so. Uh, what's next for you guys? Uh, of course, you should get like a developer license uh, so you can actually start using this one. Uh, you should uh, check out uh, Channel 9 uh, and the blogs there. You have a lot of information about Project Sienna. There's also some uh, information on TechNet. You have some other guys which have created uh, some blogs about this. And of course, check out my blog as well. I will create probably a couple of blogs after uh, today to talk more about and show more about what I was actually doing today, with even some small videos, I think, to reignite the demos. And of course, you are now ready to try this for yourself. Test it, because it's really, really easy to uh, start to test this. It's really easy to start to create apps with Project Sienna, and your end user will love it, because uh, it looks that good. It looks much better than uh, what it will look in standard SharePoint or some other things. It's also really easy to kind of create apps that uh, connect different services. Uh, so for this, you can create like one platform or one place for your end users to go to kind of do some things. Uh, so if you don't have like the big budgets for creating all these things in Visual Studio or uh, create all these big applications, this is like uh, low-hanging fruits uh, in my mind to how you can actually do cool stuff without too much uh, efforts. And of course, if you have problem problems, you can always contact me. Uh, I'm always here to help the community. I'm always here to help uh, you people. So 
Um, just contact me if you have questions or if you want like a more in-depth demo about this. Uh, and of course, uh, if you have some ideas on what to create in Project CNN and you need some input on that, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I can brainstorm together with you. Uh, so, if questions, do it in the questions and answers now. I hope someone had some questions. Uh, if you feel uncomfortable to ask the questions in the session now, uh, don't hesitate to contact me afterwards. So, thank you for now. Thank you, Knut, for a great presentation. Um, we've actually got a ton of questions in, so let's uh, see how many we can uh, get answered in the time. Um, I think you briefly touched on this one, Knut, but um, is this going to be a replacement for InfoPath? Uh, it's not going to be a replacement, I think, for InfoPath, but it can be used as a replacement for InfoPath uh, because you can actually quite easily create uh, like some uh, some forms on top of SharePoint. So, uh, but it doesn't uh, residence inside of SharePoint, so you need to kind of have then the app to be able to. Uh, yeah, to be able to uh, store the data into SharePoint. So, so it's not like a replacement, I think, but uh, uh, I think you can actually use it to replace uh, InfoPath, but uh, Microsoft have not said that <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Um, another question here, Knut. How does the yeah. list customization actually get deployed into SharePoint? Uh, actually, how did they get deployed? You just use the REST services uh, for SharePoint. So uh, you, you kind of just uh, store everything in your uh, collection, which you have uh, inside the application, and then you kind of just upload that collection into SharePoint. Uh, so there's some kind of magic in behind that. I'm not totally sure how it works, but it works. So. Uh, I, I can create a blog about that uh, this week, so if people just want to to know how to actually you can connect those dots, I will create like a small video to show it so and publish it on my blog uh, because it's really easy uh, and you just need to add some few things to the input fields to be able to uh, actually uh, yeah you need to have uh, have a behavior there that actually uh, is checking if if the text have changed, and if it's changed, you will actually save it to SharePoint. Okay. I hope that was um, an answer to the question. <laughs> no, that sounds perfect. I have another question here. Um, uh, this user is saying this might be a dumb question, but <laughs> will these apps only run on a Windows desktop or tablet? Uh, yeah, it's not a dumb question. It's, uh, it's a <laughs> good question, uh, and uh, the answer for that is yes. And I think that is probably uh, how I can see it—the the biggest limitation to to this for now, because uh, Project Sienna is using HTML and uh, so on to render. Uh, so of course, uh, then to have like an application like this that wouldn't work on Windows phones, for instance, for me is like a big mistake. Uh, so I'm kind of eager to see what will be with the next version, if they will do some changes there, because uh, of course everything that comes out of Microsoft now is like cross-platform and cross-device, uh, and Project CNA is not. So, uh, but uh, at least uh, if you have like a Windows uh, 8 device uh, or Windows 10 device, uh, it will be possible to use Project Sienna for creating really easy uh, apps for that. Okay. Um, another question here, uh, is Sienna integrated with SharePoint Search? Uh, you uh, integrated with SharePoint Search, not totally sure if I understand the question, but uh, you can uh, use, for instance, Bing Search to search, and of course you can use uh, probably some, uh, some things within SharePoint, uh, so to say, but you need to have like a data source, so to say, yeah, so uh, you need you need then to kind of uh, open up the uh, stuff before actually to be able to to show uh, the results from the search. So uh, it's not totally integrated as far as I know. No. Okay. And uh, final question, Knut. How is Project Sienna better than creating websites with the same information and connectors? Would would a website not be a much simpler entry point for users? Uh, that's like a million dollar question, I think. So it's a, uh, it's a question which is uh, impossible to give a good answer to because uh, 
that totally depends on every project uh, and what your project should do. Uh, I think uh, to create web application is uh, still really, really good. Uh, because uh, if you use proper coding skills and everything, it will be cross-platform and cross-device, uh, which Project Sienna is not. Uh, the problem with uh, those HTML pages and so on is that it's not that easy for the end users to actually do it. Uh, so this is uh, Project Sienna, as I look at it, is more like uh, something for the end users, the uh, IT pros, the business users, where they can actually create apps themselves, where they don't need the developer or the consultants like myself to come in and uh, they need to pay a lot of money for me to do some things which actually they can do themselves if they have the proper tool sets available. Uh, so there is actually where I think Project Sienna comes in. It's like uh, uh, to, to draw like uh, uh, comparison to something. It's like uh, in some ways Power BI also can do, you know, you can uh, let the end users and the business users to actually do a lot of stuff without knowing too much so deep down the level uh, yeah uh, about the different things which you have uh, because the business users they know what they want uh, they just doesn't know all what the technology can provide for them so uh, that is where project Sienna comes in I think that uh, actually they can easily create something which can actually maybe be good enough for them or they can just show it to uh, the, uh, their leaders or something and say this is what we want, can you get someone to create this for us of course and, and then you can use like uh, a web uh, developer or like a Windows form developer, C sharp developer which can actually create the end user application uh, which is more advanced than what projects Sienna can give you, but uh, for like small easy applications, you, everybody saw how easy it was to create these two applications which I was creating now with just a few minutes actually, uh, and it still it looks kind of nice, I didn't do any big graphical things which you can also do, and uh, you also saw how easy it was to build the application and install it, and for many end users of course they want to be able to push the start button. Uh, and get uh, get the application there, which a web page uh, like a web page is, even get it there without needing to do something more. So yeah, well I hope that answered the question at least. And if not, please contact me and uh, we can have like a more discussion about this because it's quite an interesting question, so to say. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks, Knut. We, we'll finish it on that tricky question um, because we're out of time. Um, and thanks again for a brilliant webinar today. Thank you so um, much, Dickland. So, perfect. Uh, so for more top quality training from the world's best speakers, look no further than Stockholm for European SharePoint Conference 2015. You can currently avail of the fantastic early bird offer. You get a three-day pass for the superb price of €1,100. Euro. Check www.sharepointeurope.com for more information. And make sure to check out the notes session when you're there as well. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, next up in our webinar series, we'll be joined by Sebastian Liebert on August 19th. We'll be talking about Office 365 and PowerShell, a match made in heaven. To register and find out more about this webinar, go to bit.ly forward slash 0365 power. Goodbye for now, and I hope to see you all soon.